So as I said, I feel like there's a little bit missing in here, like it's kind of empty. And I think I'd like to try and recreate this thing. And I don't really have another picture of it. Let's press Control spacebar to enlarge it. And there's a lot of detail that I just can't see and that we don't exactly want for a low poly model like this one. But I think we can put in just some basic shapes and once again, kind of trick the eye into thinking there's more detail than there actually is. So I think I wanna create this plate here and maybe some sort of cylindrical thing going through here on the bottom. I need this with this cylinder here. And I need these braces on either side, this kind of triangular brace thing, and this cylinder here. And I think if I get all of that in there, it'll maybe fill that space and be at least kind of believable. <laughs> let's give it a try. Um, so first of all, I think let's go ahead and create this thing, this plate, since it's connected directly to the gun there. So once again, I'm going to hide... Um, the things I do not need. So I'm going to select uh, all of this, these. Oh, what else do we need in here? Uh, looks like these are still their own piece. I could grab these. So I'm just kind of bringing in the things that I feel like will help me get a sense of the scale and proportion of these things. Oh, I think maybe this here. There we go. All right, and then let's press Shift H to hide everything that is not selected. And let's begin with this. So right down here, I'll uh, bring the cursor to this area right there. And let's create a cube. Shift A, mesh cube, and we don't need it two meters. How about 0.1? Yeah, that helps. And let's uh, scale this down and put it in place. Maybe we need it um, about like this. Let's try this. Uh, we need to scale it in a bit here, so S and X, like that. Um, I think I wanna move this back just a bit so it is about the same length as that piece that we extruded off earlier. All right, so there's that basic piece. Down here, I think we could maybe bring this down like this, bring that face down. And then if I extrude to get some of this shape down here, so if we hit E and pull down, now what let's do is go to wireframe and vertex select, and I'll border select, say, these points here and pull them in. You can see how there's kind of an angle here at the back, so I'm trying to get that. And then there's a bit of an angle up front, I think. So let's pull that back like that. And then now that we're here, we could probably bring in these cylinders right here. Let's try that. Shift a cylinder here. Uh, let's take it down to 12 sides. Uh, maybe we want it to be, well, let's try 0.01 and 0.02. There we go. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then let's spin it in the Y, R, Y, 9, 0. And let's put this down, what do you think, down here like this. All right, let's see how it looks in solid mode. Um, the, the size actually isn't bad. Maybe I'll bring it over here and put it about like this. Now the question is, do these holes go all the way through? <laughs> and if they do, do I care? Well, let's go ahead and select these two faces here and delete them. Yeah, let's go ahead and add a solidify modifier so the hole goes all the way through. Even thickness, and let's drag the uh, thickness field to something like that. Let's do that. And the problem with that is I've got this here, so with that I need to move it out some like that. There we go. So then we can just take this and move it over to the other side. Uh, here we go. Shift D X and I'll move it over about like that. Okay, so we've got those in. Let me go back to solid view there. Now we've got a little bolt here and 
Usually I wouldn't worry about that kind of thing with this kind of piece, but I see one right here. I mean, it's right there. Why don't I just grab this, duplicate it, and hit Y, and then hit P and separate by selection. Now let's grab that and move the cursor to it. There we go. Or the origin, I should say. And then let's hit Control-3 to go over to this side, and let's move it over and kind of put it in place right in here. So, I mean, it's an easy thing to do since it's just right there. So I'll go ahead and do it. Let's uh, duplicate it and move it over to the other side. Then we'll spin it around with RZ180. And we'll put this right over here. Like that. Okay, so we've got those pieces. Um, I feel like there's a, a, a piece right up here that we could kind of extrude out. Let me, maybe if we took this right here, let's just take this face and this face and let's extrude that out just to give it a little bit more detail. I'll hit ESX and kind of pull those out just a bit like that. Yeah, just to give it a little bit more there. Okay, now what we should do is place this cylinder and kind of maybe try and put a bracket around it or, or something. Let's, uh, let's see what we can do here. Um, I'll move the cursor to here, and let's bring in another cylinder. I'll turn it in the Y, and let's take a look at it from the side here. And if I bring it down, well, it looks like it's back here. Let's bring it down and put it right in here, let's say. And then, well, I kind of want it right in there, I think. Yeah, let's put it there, and then let's scale it out, S and X, and it goes kind of outside that area there. Then what we need to do is put some sort of bracket on it to ground it to this piece. So let's select this and take a look at what we might be able to do. I think what we could do is insert two edge loops here and scale these out like this. And we've got an edge here. Maybe if we added one more edge right over here, like that, then we could take this whole thing. Let me select all of these out here. We could take this whole thing and extrude it down. Let's do this. E, and I'm just going to pull it down to about here. And then we could use the bevel tool to kind of round it out so it's kind of the same shape as that cylinder. And actually what I realize is I don't want all of this in here. Let me undo this. Let me undo this back to here. And what I want is just these. I don't want everything in the center there. I just want those two. So let's do that again with these two like this. There we go. And then let's apply the scale. And now, if we select these edges here, like this, now we can go ahead and hit Control B and bevel these. So I'll press Control B and I'll move the mouse and then I'll scroll the mouse wheel. And we can add some edges to that by scrolling the mouse wheel. And maybe we could do it about like this. Let's try that. Yeah, so that gives us a nice kind of bracket around that cylinder there. Okay, so now that we've got those in, let's work on this kind of triangle bracket here. I'm not sure what that is, kind of a brace that seems to be connected to this post here. And I think this thing is just to help the soldier move it around easier since maybe all the weight is back here. I think that's what that is. Um, so it needs to be connected to that post. So if we take a look at that, it looks like it's got kind of a, an angle and flat pieces on the front and back. So let's um, take the cursor back down to the grid with Shift-S1. And then I'm going to create a cube down here, and I'll hit the period key to go down here. And let's scale it in the X. And let's scale it in the Y with S and Y. Something like this. And then I think what we need to do is add a couple of edge loops and pull the front and the back. So what I'm going to do is I'll add an edge loop right back here, like, say, like this. Then what I can do 
is maybe press Alt-Z and I'll hit the three key to go to face select and I'll border select all of these. Now what I'll do is just pull them this way like that. All right. Now let's do that kind of again up here, but this time what let's do is just take this edge loop and let's just pull it back this way like that. All right, so we've got that basic shape there. I feel like it needs to come out a little bit more down here. Let's do that. Maybe bring it this way some. All right, so there's that piece. It looks like it has a curve at the bottom here, and maybe there's one at the top because it's going to go up and down or hinge at that point. So let's go ahead and come in here and select these edges right here. Oh, I better apply the scale. And let's select those edges and these edges here. And once again, we'll do the same thing. We'll hit Control B, we'll move the mouse, and then we can also scroll the mouse wheel to add or subtract edges to that. There we go. All right, that looks pretty good. So let's take that up and see what we can do with it. I will uh, hit G and move it up here. Let's scale it down quite a bit until it's about the right size, maybe. And let's put it here. And then. I think we need to move it to one side. Maybe something like that. Let's see, let's take this and spin it down. So if we grab this face here, looks like I can move the cursor to that point there. And then I'll change from median point to 3D cursor with the period key, change to 3D cursor. And now if we press R and X, it'll rotate at that point. So maybe down like that. Is that, uh, it looks like it may be too big though. I think I need to scale it in some. So let me undo this and I'll just hit S and scale in. And then R and X and let's bring that down like that. So it's going to angle, it still doesn't seem like it's going to angle quite right. So let me undo this, hit S and scale in, S and Z and make it a little bit thicker. Now let's try this, R and X, and I'll spin it down. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. So that'll be angled like this. I think that'll be okay. All right, let's go ahead and mirror this over. I'll move the cursor to the center of the grid with Shift-S1, and I'll change my pivot point to the median point. I'll move that origin now to the 3D cursor. And I'll come over here and add a mirror modifier. So there we go. There's that piece there. All right. So in the next video, what we want to do is create this piece here and the cylinder here. And then we're going to have to create some sort of connecting piece to kind of ground it to that post. We'll work on that coming up next.